When I first heard about the praise, praises move God, it gave me a feeling like I can actually praise God for God to do something for me. And I know there are a lot of Christians today who praise God for God to do something for them. So in today's video, I want to share with you the truth I've learned about praising God. Number one, praising God is not transactional and it should not be transactional. You should not regard praising God as a means to an end, as if to say, God, I praise you so that you will do this or that for me. If I'm sick in my body, God, I praise you so that you will heal me. Rather, you should say, God, I praise you because I believe you are the healer. Because your praise should be directed to God's personality, who he is, his power, his ability, his might. Like the psalmist would say, praise the Lord for his excellent greatness. Praise the Lord for he is good. That's his personality. Praise the Lord for his loving kindness endures forever. For his grace endures forever. Praise him for his goodness. So when you praise God, it is not with the idea of saying, God, I'm doing this for you to do that. It should not be transactional. God, I'm praising you today. I'm dancing for you. I'm doing that so that you can do what I am asking you so that you can make my request come to pass. God is already so good that even if your situation was not to change, you would not change your response to him because he is good to you. So if you are to look for a miracle from God, your praise to God should not be, God, I'm praising you so that you bring the miracle to pass. It should be, God, I praise you because I know you are the miracle worker. That should be the right response. And you can apply this in anything you might be facing in life. It should be, I am praising God because I have faith in him. I believe in him. I believe that he is able to do whatever I am asking of him. In Philippians, Paul was advising the brethren to rejoice in the Lord. And in verse 6 of Philippians 4, he said, don't be pulled in different directions or worried about a thing. Be saturated in prayer throughout each day, offering your faith-filled request before God with overflowing gratitude. Now, that is the magnifier. Whatever prayer you make, Paul says, let it come with thanksgiving. Tell him every detail of your life. Tell God everything about your life, but do that with a heart of gratitude. Don't do it with complaint, as if you are going to God like this entitled child. Who says to his dad, dad, I've been asking of this and that and the third and you've not done it. You should treat going to God with a posture of gratitude in your heart. Because it is not a transaction. It is actually relational. You are relating with God. You are not trying to transact as if it's a business. Number two, God cannot be flattered by praise. Like you can hype someone and call them sweet names and be very smooth with your words. And it's going to touch their hearts. They'll blush. Man, you can't make God blush because of the sweet things you say about him. He knows who he is. So you cannot make him blush. You cannot flatter him. Because if it's just coming from your mouth without you believing it, without you believing in him and having a relationship with him, it is nothing. You are just doing what we do to other human beings. Whereby you are just flattering them. You are trying to hype them. But you cannot hide God because he's the most high. How do you hide someone that is already greatest? That is the supreme. He can't be hyped by you. He cannot be flattered by you. So what should you do as a believer? Not to try and flatter God. Not to try and just say only words to him. Which are empty but not based on truth. So God cares more about your life, your heart and your lifestyle. Are you living a lifestyle of gratitude, of thanksgiving to him? Are you having a grateful heart before him? That matters such that when you say what you say, it should come from your heart. It should be based on your belief in him. So your praise to God should not be based on you trying to flatter God as if to say words to him that will swell his head and make him be like, Wow, I'm blushing because God will blush. He's not emotional. Like that, like us. He knows your heart from the depth of it. Every action you put out, God knows the intention behind it. So when you go to this awesome God, you should be able to go to him with an open heart, knowing that he knows who you are. So when you're praising him, it should be genuine. It should be real. In Isaiah, the scripture says, And so the Lord says, These people say they are mine. They honor me with their lips. But their hearts are far from me. And that's a result of flattery to God. When you tell God, God, you are the greatest. God, you are awesome. In your heart, you believe that he is awesome. When you call him sweet names, in your heart, you believe that it's true. That these names I'm calling God is not to hype him to do something for me. But it's actually, I'm calling him because that's who he is. I'm even reminding myself of who he is. Because it is not to remind God when we praise him of who he is. It is to remind ourselves of who God is. Number three, praise is suitable for the righteous. What does it mean? 
Press is beautiful for the righteous. Now, the question I would ask here is, who is the righteous man according to the new covenant? The righteous person according to the new covenant is this person that believes in Jesus, in his birth, in his death, and his resurrection. As scripture says that he that knew no sin was made to become sin, that we who were sinners should be made to be the righteousness of God in Christ. So Jesus, who was sinless in thought, in word, and in deed, was made to become sin. How did he become sin? By taking our sin, being a substitute for us, becoming an advocate to say, I will take their place so that they will take my place. He was in a place of righteousness. That is why the song says, clothed in his righteousness alone. Because scripture already tells us that our righteousness are like filthy rags. So the righteous person is someone who believes in Jesus, that he is justified by the grace of God through Jesus, not by his works and through the works of the law. Now, this is the person that God says, praise is beautiful. Praise is suitable for this righteous person. Because now this person is a person that is full of gratitude. Is no more coming to God with an entitled mindset of like, God, you must do this for me or you must do that. If you don't do it, I won't praise you again. I will hold my praise. No. Jesus said, if you will not praise, when he was talking to the Pharisees, I will make the stones rise up and praise. And I will say, no, the stones can't take my place. No rock can take my place to praise God. I know he's been so good to me. He took my place, took my sins, took all my sufferings and my sickness on his body. He only needs for me to come to realization of what he has done to believe him in faith to appropriate all he has done. So Psalm 33 says, Rejoice in the Lord, O ye righteous, for praise is comely for the upright. And it's such a beautiful thing when your life and the words from your mouth align before God. God sees that the life you live and the things you say to him are true. Instead of complaining and whining about what's not working out, you praise God knowing that he has the ability and the might to change the situation for you. The number four truth about praise is that God makes his home in our praise. God makes our praise his dwelling place. The idea of that phrase, praises move God, comes from the scripture in Psalms 22, where it says, But thou art holy, O thou that inhabitest the praises of Israel. So this idea was generated from that place that since God inhabits the praises of his people, that praises actually move God. But I think I have a different perception to that. And please hear me. I'm not trying to counter that word, praises move God. So for me, instead of saying praises move God, as that word to me seems like a trigger word that makes me start thinking about other negative things, as if I can flatter God to just do something. As if I can just praise God and then the miracle will be fastened. I would rather say that my praises create an atmosphere for God's presence to be experienced by me. My praises doesn't necessarily move God from his seats. It actually creates an atmosphere for me to experience him because his power is everywhere. He is omnipotent. His omniscience is omnipresence. So his presence is everywhere. But for me to experience it tangibly, my praise can create that atmosphere. So in praising God, his tangible presence can be felt. And that is where I believe that his presence is what makes the difference. It is not my praise that makes the difference. Because I don't even know if he receives my praise or not. If you are in an atmosphere, in a corporate setting, we are creating an atmosphere whereby we can experience God. That's what our praise do. It actually makes us experience God, not like it moves God in his capacity. So in conclusion, when the psalmist said, Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. It was not with the idea of make God bigger than who he is or hide God with me. It's actually with the idea of boasting about God, priding in God. Even as scripture says, he that boasts should boast in the Lord. Boasting in the power of God, in the grace of God, in the goodness of God, that that is the reason that I am alive. Like Paul said in Acts of the Apostle, in him we live, in him we move, in him we have our being. That is a boast in God. That is a praise to God. That is an adoration and worship to God. You should not have the mindset that if you magnify God, it's going to make him stand up on, from his seat. It's going to make him in his capacity be bigger. God is the most high. God is the supreme one. God is the highest. Is the biggest. Is the greatest. Whatever thing you want to say. So what can you use to compare him? Nothing. What do you then do? You magnify him in your situation. When the situation of your life seems to be overwhelming, 
That is where you need to magnify God to make your situation know that my God is greater than what I am going through. My God is greater than the depression that is trying to find a space into my heart. My God is greater than my anxious thoughts. My God is bigger than these problems. That is to magnify God because it is to build your faith in God's faithfulness. And it's to remind yourself of who God is to you. I hope this video is beneficial to you and you've learned something from it. Thank you so much for watching this video to the end. I am Uwe Mkwana and this is my YouTube channel. Do well to hit the subscribe button if you've not yet subscribed to this channel. And then give this video a thumbs up. It will help YouTube algorithm to share it to other people to watch also. Thank you. If this video has blessed you, share it to other people for them to watch. And then I would like to hear from you what you've learned about praising God and what praising God means to you and the truth you know about praising God because this is not an exhaustive list of things that are true about praising God. There are so many other things that could be said and I want you to share that with me in the comments. Thank you so much and see you in my next YouTube video. Bye-bye.